Welcome to the online visiting lecture today. And first, let me introduce myself. My name is Dwi Putri Wulansari, and I will be responsible for hosting this event today. And I'm very glad to welcome Professor Jiang from Kornberg School of Dentistry, Temple University, United States of America, as our presenter today. Good evening, Professor. Good the morning. Honorable. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good morning in Indonesia, but maybe um, good evening in your place. Thank you. The Honorable the Dean and the Vice Dean of Faculty of Dentistry Universitas Padajaran and all the lecture staff and the residency student from all major in Faculty of Dentistry Universitas Padajaran and all the participants. Ladies and gentlemen, first I would like to inform you about our rundown today. The first session is words from Head of Study Program Dental Maxillofacial Radiology, Universitas Pajajaran. The second session will be the welcome speech and opening from the Dean of Faculty of Dentistry, Universitas Pajajaran. And the third session is lecture presentation from Professor Jiang and followed by the discussion session. And the last session will be the certificate submission, photo session and closing. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start our event today, let us pray according to our beliefs to the event um, to be successful. Let's pray. Well, next agenda is the words from Head of Study Program Dental Maxillofacial Radiology Universitas Pajajaran, Dr. Azhari PhD, Specialist Consultant of Dental Maxillofacial Radiology. Dr. Azhari, time is yours. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The Honorable, our visiting professor, Prof. Jiang from Convex School of Dentistry in Temple University, USA. The Honorable, the Dean of Vice Dean Faculty Dentistry, Universitas Pajajaran, the Honorable, all the lecture staff and all the participants. All praise to Allah for this guidance and blessing today. It's a real pleasure for me to welcome you at this online visiting lecture today about CBCT, incidental finding, what dental specialists need to know. That will be presented by our visiting professor, Prof. Gia. Ladies and gentlemen, Universitas Pajajaran is currently pursuing number of goals in order to become a world class university. This is the reason why we need to improve the quality of learning and research in higher education. Join visiting lectures would improve the quality of the teaching process and contribute to providing an international education and perspective for students, as well as provide some networking opportunities, which would be be highly beneficial to the development of education and research. The audience for this visiting lecture is teaching staff and resident student. student. I hope that the present will be well accepted because it's directly relevant to our area expertise. I would like to take this opportunity to thank for chairperson, committee members, and the speaker, Prof. Gia, for taking time out their busy agendas to actively participate in this event. And thanks you to the Dean of Faculty of Dentistry, Universitas Pajajaran, who had grant the committee and honor for setting and conducting this visiting lecture. I sincerely hope you will enjoy the lecture. Thank you very much for your attending. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Dr. Azhari. Now we move to the next agenda. The welcome speech and opening from the Vice Dean on behalf of the Dean of Faculty of Dentistry, Universitas Pajajaran, Dr. Sri Susilawati, Master Public Health, PhD. Dr. Susi, time is yours. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Dwi. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Good morning to everyone. Thank you for all participants for being here with us today. We are very pleased to welcome you uh, who have been with us for visiting lecture this morning. Thank you and also welcome to Professor Dr. Jia from Temple University USA. Uh, thank you for your time for us and fulfill our invitation. I also thank you for Professor Dr. Suharjo for attending here with us today. Actually, this activity is part of a series of visiting professor activities, which were held in collaboration between the Dental Maxillofacial Radiology Specialist Program, collaboration with the International Division, which is one of the several programs to meet faculty of dentistry Universitas Pajajaran to become the international recognition. Before we get started, I would like to express to the committee that generally see how to make this event come true. So at the time, allow me to open this event. And I hope what, we'll, what we will get can be a complement to our knowledge, which is very useful for us. And hopefully all can enjoy this event. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Erdwi. Thank you very much, Dr. Susi. And now we move to the lecture session that will be guided by Dr. Belly Sang as our moderator. Well, but before that, I will read the curriculum vitae of Dr. Belly. Dr. Belly Sang was born in 1971, and he is a permanent lecturer in Dental Maxillofacial Department Faculty of Dentistry Universitas Pajajaran. His area of expertise is in radiology of temporomandibular junction. In 1998, he attained his dentist degree, and in uh, 2008, he attained his master's degree from Universitas Pajajara. In 2012, he graduated as dental maxillofacial radiologist from Universitas Pajajara, and he was a trainee in forensic dentistry and anthropology that uh, was being held by the Forensic Dental Education Committee in 2015. In 2019, Dr. Belly Sam was a trainee in Advanced Digital Dental Imaging course that was held uh, that was being held by Cavo in Tuzula Vinland and Bibelheim Munich, Germany. And now he is still pursuing doctoral degree at Faculty of Medicine, Universitas Pajajara. For the work and organization experiences, Dr. Belly was the General Secretary of Indonesian Oral and Maxillofacial Radiology Association, ICARGI, in 2003 until 2014. In 2017 until 2018, Dr. Belly was one of p KGB Commission member in Executive Board of Indonesian Dentist Association. And also he was the director of academic and medical services in Dental Hospital Universitas Pajajaran in 2019. Well, Dr. Belly, we will have 60 minutes for the presentation of Professor Jiang and also 60 minutes for discussion session. For all the participants, you can put your question in the chat window during the presentation, or if you want to deliver your question directly, you can click the raise hand button once the discussion session is opened by our moderator. Please keep your microphone on mute while the presentation. Dr. Billy, I leave this session to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Putri. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning to all notable guests and audience. Thank you for time and attention. So let's start the webinar with our speaker. First, uh, let me introduce about uh, Dr. Jiang. Yeah. For Professor Dr. Jiang, DDS, EMH Science, MSDMD, 
uh, is professor and director of oral and maxillofacial radiology at Temple University Cornwall School of Dentistry USA. In 1996, a uh, diplomat of American Board of Oral and Maxillofacial Radiology and elected to become a director of ABOMR. Uh, and so Dr. Yang, past president of the International Association of Dental Maxillofacial Radiology, uh, and uh, past president of American Academy of uh, Oral and Maxillofacial Facial Radiology, and has served as North American Regional Director and Secretary to Board of EADMFR. Uh, 2010 until 2013, uh, Councillor of Educational Affairs of EEOMR, and Dr. Yang as a Chair of Position Paper Committee and IOMR's voting uh, representative to American Dental Association Standard Committee. Dr. Yang published numerous articles and research abstract in the field of dental and medical imaging. Uh, Dr. Yang has been serving on editor now boards uh, of oral surgery, oral medicine, oral pathology, oral radiology, of course, uh, Chinese Journal Dental of Research and Implant Dentistry. And Dr. Yang has, uh, has supervised many international visiting scholars and presented a lecture uh, worldwide. And now, selamat malam or good night, uh, Dr. Yang. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Dr. Sun, uh, for your nice introduction. And dear uh, the, the Dean, Vice Dean the Susie, and uh, Dear the colleagues, friends um, uh, from Indonesia, and uh, it is my great honor to um, be back, although it's, it's online, it's virtually to uh, meet with everyone. It is really a great opportunity, and uh, uh, and I'm looking forward that in the future we open up the. Um, uh, the, the, the travel so that we can see each other either in US or, or in, in, in Indonesia. Um, now it's, uh, uh, can I share my screen? Okay, uh, the time is yours, Mr. Yang. Okay. Again, that um, this is a great um, the honor uh, for me, and uh, it's also my great pleasure uh, to uh, share my uh, some of my experience on uh, CBCD in instant findings uh, with the you and your uh, dental uh, specialists. Um, for those um, uh, who are not. Uh, um, 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 like uh, uh, see me last time in, in the in, in the country, and I uh, I'm a, a professor and director um, from radiology at Temple University Combo of School of Dentistry, and uh, the university the Temple University is located in Philadelphia. Um, the Philadelphia is located between the New York and the Washington D.C. I think the, uh, many of you um, have been here in, in the uh, East Coast. Uh, uh, last time that uh, Professor Tam, Dr. Oskanda, the way we, we, uh, our school hosted uh, the, uh, um, then and, uh, the and the some of the friends also from the Indonesia in the uh, US. Now, who, those who haven't been in US or in Philadelphia. Um, this is probably um, we can uh, introduce to you. Philadelphia was the first capital of the United States. The independence, uh, this is independence hall. And uh, um, also we have uh, Liberty Bell, which is a symbol of the, of the freedom of the country. Um, so this is uh, the downtown Philadelphia. And this is uh, uh, one of the, the river uh, running through the city. It's called the Schuylkill River. 
And uh, this is an art museum. It's one of the largest uh, art museum in, in US. And uh, this is uh, the Penn's Landing, which is on the, um, the border of the, the Delaware River, separate uh, New Jersey and the Pennsylvania. Now, two years ago, we were honored to host the, the 22nd International Congress of Dental Maxillofacial Radiology in Philadelphia. And um, we have uh, um, more than 600 oral maxillofacial radiologists from 55 countries, including uh, some of uh, the colleagues from Indonesia, uh, like Professor Tam and others uh, in the um, in this Congress. Now we really miss this like in person that uh, the meeting uh, these days because of pandemic we can't cannot travel uh, anymore. And uh, um, I particularly miss like uh, about eight years, eight, nine years ago, I was able to visit the, your great university, your great country. And uh, there was the, um, uh, the conference in your university that was uh, very impressive. And I was uh, uh, the, so happy to uh, join the, the meeting in your university and uh, have very good memory. And uh, I, this is a, a, yeah, the lovely boy. Yeah, I hope now he's, he become probably the college student now. Now, today I'm gonna talk about uh, instant finding of CBCT. As we know that CBCT has been widely used uh, in dental practice. So this is just like uh, uh, some examples for implants, for airway assessment, the temporal mandibular joint. So those are 3D imaging, but these days also can do the 4D imaging, you know, to assess the change of the condyle and uh, other the boning structures. So the, the combing CT has been widely used in our practice. And uh, uh, certainly um, because of the, the time limitation, we've, we're just uh, focus on the instant finding, um, not uh, uh, about the application itself. Now, what is the instant finding? So this is one of the, the questions we're gonna uh, the discuss um, uh, in the lecture. Um, the other thing is, what is the legal and ethical responsibilities as dentists or dental specialists? Then third, does the 3D CBCT reveal more instant findings than 2D imaging? And most importantly, I will go over the um, the different region and uh, uh, the show some examples of the instant findings in different anatomical location. Now, first, what is the instant finding? This is a finding discovered unexpected, unexpectedly. Um, imaging examination for unrelated reason, for example, the patient come to uh, your clinic for implant or for orthodontic treatment planning or for the endodontic treatment planning. So those findings, those instant findings may be not related to your original reason for implants or ortho assessment. So those are the, the findings we call the instant finding. Now, based on the medical uh, literature, the maxillofacial imaging, diagnostic imaging, has about 31% instant findings, so range from 20 to 41% from the uh, 24 CT articles. The clinical importance of those instant findings include major finding, moderate finding, and the minor finding. 
Now, one of the largest study, which including 16,000 CT scans, um, this um, work was done by Dr. Rogers uh, and uh, his colleague uh, published in 2013. There were about 4% major findings, which is the um, uh, increased tumor and other the lesions which requires immediate attention. There were 26% the moderate findings, mainly like sinus condition, sinus inflammation. Uh, these kind of moderate findings may need a follow up. But the majority of those instant findings, like 70% of those findings are insignificant finding and no need to follow up. Now, this gives uh, maxillofacial radiologists a uh, dilemma. Uh, now, if you fail, to report or, or diagnose that the occult disease certainly has a legal liability. Um, now in US, we have like uh, so many lawyers and uh, um, the people were saying law firm is more like a gas station. So the, uh, we have uh, the lawyer anywhere, everywhere. So if you, you fail to report some of the disease, then certainly there's the legal uh, liability. But the other way, if you over diagnosis, sometimes they say, okay, I'm not sure, then I send every patient for a, bio a biopsy or, or the further the medical imaging examination. So that's kind of the over diagnosis also can cause the problem. Um, if it's particularly if those insignificant, insignificant findings or those artifacts, then you may lead patients with the unnecessary test and also make the patients uh, feeling distressed. Now in the United States, how to handle instant findings, this kind of the, the um, the ethical issue was proposed by the Presidential Commission for Study of Bioethical Issues. Now, the key point is that the practitioner should inform patients with the findings. The professional organizations should develop guidelines to helping the people, the dentist or dental specialists or medical um, the people to review those the instant of findings. And uh, certainly some research can be done on those uh, other findings in terms of the, um, the diagnosis and the preference uh, that um, the prognosis. And public and private agency should prepare education material. And patients should be given opportunity to express preference as we know that for, for images, sometimes we don't know the for sure for some diagnosis. And if involving the expensive study, and certainly we need the patient's the consensus. Now, the CBCD instant findings has a lot of similarity to, similarity to medical imaging, but it varies widely because we depend on the what is the purpose for the CBCT study. For example, if the four implant study, it tends to be in the senior population, the age, you know, it's relative to the, the, um, the old the population. Um, but for the ortho patients, tends to be a young individual, young patients. Now, different age population uh, or different study purpose and also different the field of the field of view and may have the different instant findings. Now we can classify the instant findings by anatomic location or clinical significance. 
Now, anatomical location, certainly we can classify the, in the maxilla, in the mandible, in the paranasal sinuses, nasal fossa, pharyngeal airway, temporal mandibular joints, scar base, temporal bone, cervical spine, and neck soft tissue. Now, depending on what is the study purpose, you may get the, all the area, you may get part of the, the area, the anatomical location. But the clinical significance, we can classify into low significant, intermediate, and high significance. Now, management, if there's low significance, we don't need to follow up. If it's intermediate significance, we need to follow up. And if there's the high significance, uh, such as a tumor or cystic lesion, which required immediate clinical and therapeutic intervention. So this is a, this, the classification can help or guide the, the, the management or treatment procedure. Now, for the C, the, the third question, the C, 3D CBCT, does it uh, seem more instant finding or has the similarity as 2D or 3, 2D imaging? Now, this is a, probably is easy to understand. Um, for example, on this periodical radiograph, we can see there is that, um, you know, in this, um, the, the molar tooth, which has endodontic treatment here, and there is a zygomatic process of uh, maxilla superimposed over on this uh, 2D imaging. But on 3D imaging, you can look at the slice. Now this is slides without overlapping the zygomatic process of maxilla, then you should be able to see the, this apical region and um, clearly without the um, uh, interference of the uh, some anatomic uh, structure. Now, this is just uh, another example. It's like uh, um, on this periapical radiograph, because this anatomic uh, structure overlapping with the, uh, the, the molar, Tooth, and we now be able to see uh, this uh, um, the apical uh, lesion as well. Now, based on one of the um, the um, the study from the endodontic uh, um, the the journal, um, the three D compensity can show significant more apical lesion than intraoral radiograph. So it's like a thirty four percent more. Uh, instant findings from 3D imaging when compared to 2D imaging. Now, this is another like uh, example. You can see um, a lot of time, the vertical root fracture of the tooth, it's not that easy to see clinically, especially if the, the fracture line is going to like from mesial to distal, like this orientation. If you take periapical radiograph, take periapical radiograph, you may not be able to see like the fracture line on periapical radiograph. But if you take the cone beam, you can see clearly there's the, the, the fracture line from mesial to distal. And also you can, from the cross section of view, you can see that the fracture line clearly. Now, this is a, um, the, another example. Um, the patients with the, uh, the post-surgical change of the maxilla and the mandible, and uh, after surgery, the patient had the, um, the discomfort. The one year later, the patient had the discomfort on the left side of the maxilla. But from the panoramic radiograph, we really cannot tell if there's any lesion in this area. But from the combined CT, you can see clearly 
there is a cystic like the lesion here in the maxilla. And this turned out to be a surgical ciliated, um, surgical ciliated uh, um, cyst of the maxilla. Now, the last of the question, the points um, um, we um, would like to uh, the sh uh, discuss is the, how to recognize the CBCD incident findings in different region. Now, people may have the different preference. Some people may start uh, from the different region, but to me, uh, probably it's easy uh, to start with the maxilla and the mandible because the, the, those lesions are, are quite familiar with the, um, the dentist and the dental specialists. Now, for example, there is um, radio opacity in the mandibular primordial region on the left side. You can see this, um, the, the radio opacity, it's kind of like uh, uh, the blending with the surrounding structures and the radio density is that of the cortical bone. On the, the coronal view, you can see this, uh, this radio opacity, it's kind of adjacent to the, the mental foramen and close to the, um, the, the mental foramen, which is the apical to one of the premolar here. Uh, as radiologists, we know this is a very, very typical finding of the anastosis, um, or the, the some people call the idiopathic osteosclerosis, uh, or some the, the, um, the doctor also called a dense bone island. Uh, or the same textbook called in osteosis. So they all they're talking about the, the, the same thing, uh, reactive with the bone change in the jaw. So this kind of the finding is an insignificant finding. And you can you know let patients know, but you don't need to fo follow up with the, this kind of patients. So this is an ins insignificant finding. The similarly. You can see there is that um, uh, the radio opacity in the uh, hard palate, we call the, um, um, the, the exostosis, uh, also that um, partinus uh, uh, in, in the maxilla. And also in the mandible, you can see the tori here in the mandibular, premolar, and the canine region. So this is exostosis tori. That's also it's insignificant finding, and you don't need to follow up with the, um, this kind of the, the finding. Now this is uh, um, the patients uh, uh, with the uh, mixed radio lucent area and the radio lucency and the radio opacity in the jaw, and also uh, involving the the the, the other side of. The, uh, the, the jaw. And these patients, uh, um, they turn out to be with um, the fibrosseous uh, dysplasia and the fibrosseous lesion. Now, this kind of the lesion, um, that depend on the situation, uh, we may have to follow up and see if there is uh, the, the change. Some, the lesion may have the developing with the, the simple bone cyst. So it can be uh, enlarged in the, uh, the area. Now, this is a, a, the cyst-like or cystic lesion in the jaw. You can see that the, uh, there is the, um, the lesion apical to that uh, one of the incisor here. And you can see the lesion is in the middle of the, um, the maxilla. And uh, here is the incisor canal or nasal parotene canal, uh, which is kind of uh, uh, slightly displaced. So this is a, uh, turned out to be a radicular cyst. Now with the radicular cyst, uh, um, certainly uh, you, you may need to consult with the, the, the oral surgeons, uh, some that if the bigger one, you may have to remove the, the cystic lesion. Now this is a dangerous area playing for that um, the dental implants, uh, but uh, uh, you can see the bone padding. It's 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 quite different from 
this side to the other side. And uh, um, if you do the, the axial view and uh, the cross section of view, you can see this is so-called like a moss eating appearance and the erosive change um, the, in the mandible. And the, this patient uh, has the osteomyelitis uh, um, the, uh, that the recently that's become like the, the chronic phase now. Now for this kind of patient, if you see that the so-called punched out appearance in the mandible, uh, on 3D, you probably can see well that there's like a punch the holes in, in, the, in, the, in the jaw. And uh, on both sides of the, um, the, the mandible. And these patients turn out to be with the, um, the multiple myeloma. So this kind of the, uh, the lesion, certainly we need the, in the, 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 the immediate attention and the patient need the, uh, to do the, the medical um, the treatment um, the, and the, the follow up. So those are the just the example. You may see some of the instant finding insignificant. Some instant finding is the, the significant. Um, you may need to follow up right away. Now for paranasal sinuses, and the same thing, there's also a lot of um, instant insignificant findings, for example, like a, a normal anatomy, variation of normal anatomy, those kind of the, the findings, uh, um, you probably you don't need to follow up. For example, there's like accessory osteum. Uh, this one is in the, in the, uh, involving the maxillary sinus here. Um, that the, uh, this kind of accessory can now uh, usually less than 10 millimeter in diameter may be associated with the chronic sinusitis. You can see that the, a lot of time that the, there is the sinus infection uh, in association with the austere, um, the accessory austere. And the most important um, anatomical location in, in the sinuses is the osteomere complex. Now, as radiologists, we are quite familiar with the, the osteomere complex, uh, uh, the anatomy and the variation of anatomy. But for other dental specialists, uh, they probably um, not quite familiar with the, the anatomic structure and not quite familiar with the, what kind of uh, the entity or what kind of lesion can the block the osteomere complex. Now, if you see that the, um, the finding uh, osteomere, osteomere complex like this one, which is the, the block on the left side, um, you would need to know what's the reason, what caused this blockage. Now, in this particular region, it's, uh, uh, the, the, the case is because of the mucosal thickening and uh, the other, other situation also can cause in the osteomere complex blocking. For example, anatomical location, uh, the variation, uh, like this one, there's the, um, the control blows are here. It's a little bit like uh, the hollow cells uh, uh, the, the, there and also can narrow the, the osteomere complex. So that the, and the mucosa thickening plus the hollow cells and uh, um, this, uh, um, the control browser, they all can uh, contribute to the narrowing or block the osteomere complex. So this is uh, the findings. Uh, sometimes it's, it's very useful for implant patients or, or sinus lift a bone graft uh, in this, um, this um, in the maxilla. Uh, certainly like a polyposis, um, Mucus retention cyst or pseudocyst, uh, they can the block the osteomere complex. Um, certainly, if there is the tumor in the sinuses, uh, that also can block the osteomere complex. Now, the sinus, uh, the instant finding, the most common finding is the sinusitis. Uh, we can have the acute sinusitis. 
uh, if the patients with the, say like the cold or flu, um, then they tend to get the, the acute sinusitis. The radiographic finding, as we know, that's if you see the air through the level like this one, or sometimes you see the air bubbles inside, then you would know this is a acute the sinusitis. But if you see that the, uh, the sinus inflammation or infection for you know, more than like uh, 12 weeks, which is the first three months, most likely this kind of sinusitis will become that uh, a chronic sinusitis. The radiographic finding, you may see like sclerotic change of the sinus wall. Now on the right side, on the right side, you can see that sinus wall is uh, it's clear, it's thin, but this one, you see the sclerotic change. And uh, so this is a, a typical, the chronic sinusitis. And also you can see the opacification. Sometimes it could be the partial opacification. Sometimes you may just see the mucosal thickening. Now, in this case, you see the complete opacification of the maxillary sinus. Now, the, during like spring season, we often see a lot of allergic sinusitis. Uh, the some patient may have a lot of the polyposis in the the maxillary sinus. And um, now this kind of the sinusitis, uh, um, they may become the chronic sinusitis if uh, the sinus, uh, the, the information did not control. Um, radiographic, typically you see those, the, the polyposis and uh, um, the sun that uh, may involve in all the paranasal sinuses and uh, become the, the pan sinusitis like opacification of the, 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 or the, the paranasal sinuses. Now, the one of the, the sinusitis, uh, like fungal uh, sinusitis, as we know the, the if the patients, um, it's normal patients, most likely we will get this in um, non-invasive, the, the, the sinusitis. Um, but if the patient have like immunocompromised the, the condition, like HIV AIDS or other uh, the di or diabetes or other, the immunocompromised the, the condition, they make it an invasive type of the, the fungal infection. This kind of infection, they may cause in the bone destruction of the sinus wall. And uh, um, a lot of time, the radiographically, you may see the, the, the calcification, the inside. Now, if you do the implants, certainly you have to be careful if you have the invasive type of the, uh, the, the, the sinusitis. Uh, when you, you know, place implant there and the, this fungal infection can, can cause in the, the bone destruction and uh, um, make uh, the implants to fail. Now, the other one that the sinus infection is uh, from the, the tooth like odontogenic sinusitis. This is actually is pretty common. And a lot of time, if we have the apical in, uh, periodontitis or real fine osteitis, uh, they can the involve in the sinus, uh, the maxillary sinus. And uh, or sometimes there's the trauma in, in the maxilla also can have the, the sinus information involving the maxillary sinus. Milk retention cyst and the pseudo cyst. This is a, um, also it's pretty common, the instant findings in, in the maxillary sinus. And the most of these findings uh, um, are insignificant. We don't need to follow up. Uh, for example, like this one, if you see this dome shape, uh, radio opacity, um, the sinus floor is intact. And in the homogeneous uh, the, uh, uh, appearance. So this is a, a, the typical the finding of the milk retention cyst or milk retention, the pseudo cyst. We don't need to the follow up this kind of patients. But if there's the, um, the, the similar finding in the, um, in the sinus, this one, it's not the homogeneous. And this is a, 
with the court case the border here. This means there's something push up the sinus floor here. And this is odontogenic lesion. This turned out to be a radicular cyst. Now this kind of lesion certainly you need to follow up. Now, this is a 30 year old female with the pain in uh, at the tooth number 15, which is, uh, uh, this is the US, the, the, the number, this is um, now international, the system is the, like uh, it's the, um, it's 20, um, yeah, the, the number 15, it, it, it's in, in the, uh, the second maxillary, the right maxillary left the second molar. So this one with the like the bone destruction here, and uh, that's the um, the there's the some the soft tissue the mass involving the the sinus and the nasal cavity here, and this the kind of the bone destruction. It's not uh, anything benign lesion. This uh, turned out to be a malignant lesion, the squamous cell carcinoma, the involving in this region. So that's the, the perinasal sinuses. In nasal fossa, uh, we also have the, some the, the, the findings, some the significant, some the insignificant findings. And one of the common findings is the pneumatization um, of the, um, the um, middle concha, or we call the conchal brosa here. Now this one has pneumatization, the middle concha has pneumatization. And also this one has the, some sort of information inside of the, uh, the control brosa. Um, with the, this kind of large the control brosa, they certainly will block osteomeda complex and block the drainage of the sinus. So that's why you would see the, some of the information in the maxillary sinus. So this kind of the finding and this certainly you can help him with the, uh, the implant, um, the procedure, and uh, uh, before you, you do the sinus lift, you need to correct this kind of the finding. Now, the deviated nasal septum, this is a very common finding in the nasal cavity, and it can be from the anterior to, uh, to posterior, uh, from the inferior to um, the superior. And uh, some patients may have the difficult to breathe and uh, or nasal congestion and uh, uh, renal sinusitis. But the most of the, these patients have no symptoms. And if there's no symptoms, so you probably don't need to follow up. Now, the sum of the least finding, like this one, you see there's the, uh, the, the radio density, the soft tissue imaging, uh, the soft tissue density, in the nasal fossa, the appearance look like a pure shape. So this is a, um, the typical finding of the nasal uh, polyp, uh, nasal polyp poses. This kind of patient sometimes can uh, cause in the construction and uh, uh, the difficult breath for the patient. Now, Wagner's granulomatosis, uh, this one that sometimes we see in the clinic, uh, uh, um, especially that the, in, in the patients with the, um, relative with the, uh, um, the, the senior patients, the fifth stack of the life, that's the most often we see this kind of patients. The typical finding is that the, the, the defect, the nasal septum. And this kind of patients also, there's the vascular lesion and the renal, uh, the disease uh, involved. Uh, so uh, some appearance may look like uh, neoplastic in nature or, or, or malignancies, but uh, um, uh, with this kind of like uh, the defect, uh, we have no problem to make a diagnosis with the, the Wagner's uh, granulomatosis. Now, as radiologists, we know that if you're looking at nasal force or nasal cavity, um, depend on the, the location of the lesion, you probably can narrow down that um, what kind of lesion is. Uh, if you like in, in um, the, the, 
ethmoid the sinuses you may looking at the like bacteria fungal or, or the mucus seal um, the involvement and if uh, um, you have the uh, the lesion involving like um, near that uh, um, the middle conca okay. that's more often okay. in the nasal polyposis like uh, the squib cell carcinoma uh, tends to be uh, involving that uh, also in the, in the um, middle area of the nasal fossa. If this lesion the close to that uh, the superior aspect, uh, you may have to uh, looking at the olfactory uh, neuroblastoma. So this is just the uh, you know the this is just remind the 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 the, uh, the radiology specialist that when you have the lesion in different location, uh, you probably need to pay more attention to uh, the, the, the lesion. Now, pharyngeal airway, after you're looking at the, the maxilla, mandible, paranasal sinuses, nasal fossa, you can look at the pharyngeal airway. Now, most of the, the, um, the pharyngeal airway, uh, the findings, they are uh, insignificant. Uh, for example, this one, there's the, the part of the tonsils, uh, the calcification. There's so many the calcifications in the tonsils region. Now, a lot of time, this patient may have the tonsillitis in their, um, their young um, and their childhood. Uh, so this is uh, the tonsillitis uh, or tonsillitis uh, in, in the, um, the pharyngeal region. So this is a, a insignificant. Now, the, sometimes you may see this large tonsils on both sides. And the, the, this kind of enlarged tonsils may the block the airway. So this kind of like uh, the finding you may follow up first of all and uh, you know, have the uh, ear, nose, uh, ENT physician uh, to look at uh, uh, the tonsils if there's the information involved and also uh, check the airway. If it's the really block the airway, the patient may have the sleep apnea symptoms. Now, although the combined CT, we cannot see the soft tissue well. And this is a, like a years back, one of my friends that uh, uh, Dr. Eric um, that, uh, uh, shared this case with me. And uh, um, there's the like asymmetric of the, the pharynx. And uh, this one has erased the soft tissue imaging here. And it turned out to be a papilloma. Um, that uh, the thyroid cancer. Now the cervical spine, um, after we look at the, the airway space and uh, you also have to look at the cervical spine. Now, depending on what is the study purpose for implant study, you may see that the first the three, four, the cervical vertebral body. So you may see the part of the cervical spine. Now, the, as we know, the cervical spine, that the first and the second has the unique anatomic uh, structure. The, the C1 has the anterior posterior arch. The C2 have the odontoid process or dense. Um, so those have like uh, the unique findings. Most of the the cervical findings are degenerative change. We have the you know, classification of the, the ligaments, longitudinal, apical, and atlantic axial ligaments. We can have the osteophyte formation. We have the erosion and sclerosis of the vertebral body. And also sometimes we see narrow the disc spaces, or occasionally you may see the classification of the disc in the, um, in, in the uh, findings in the cone beam. So like this one, you can see there's the, uh, the classification of the anterior longitude in the ligaments. Um, this anterior, this is like uh, the posterior longitude in ligaments here. Um, so this one, the, you see the classification and the, you see the anterior osteophyte formation, the sclerotic change of the, um, you know, that the 
the um, the vertebral the the cortices, and also the the um, the disc space also narrowed. So this uh, uh, the typical degenerative change of the uh, the cervical spine, and this one even the more. A significant finding with the pronounced uh, osteophyte formation here, and this kind of finding, there's the 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 possibility like block the the airspace like here, and sometimes may the patient may have the the difficult to swollen, and uh, um, this is a uh, um, because of the the large the anterior osteophyte formation here. So that's also the degenerative change of the um, of the um, the cervical spine, and here you see that the classification of the uh, ligaments is more towards to the the posterior aspect of the um, of the cervical spine. But as we know, this is a, a the Freeman mechanism here. This is a, the spinal cord here. So anything is going back uh, uh, that tends to have the more symptoms for the patients. Now this is a, the patient with the cystic lesion in the in the um, the C two, and this turned out to be a simple bone cyst. Now as we know that we have the simple bone cyst in the in the um, in the jaw, um, but the, the simple bone cyst actually can occur in any the bony structure, uh, the cervical, uh, spine, and also the long bones as well. Now this is patients with the um, uh, actually that uh, the the findings was the instant finding because the patients uh, uh, need the um, one of the endo um, uh, the lesion and the the patient was uh, referred to uh, take the the CBCT scan but from the this CBCT scan the immediate the attention to me was that uh, you can see this osteolytic change in the, the cervical spine. And uh, also the first impression to, to me was like, uh, this is a more like a metastatic lesion or this plastic lesion, uh, because the, the osteolytic change has no clear the, the border and uh, um, um, it's non-corticated with the irregular shape involving the multiple um, the vertebral body. And the, this is a, the main reason the patients come in that, that there was like a large uh, the endo lesion here and the patients had the, the pain for uh, the six months. The patient, even the after endodontic treatment, they still have the, the symptoms. Um, so the, uh, the dentist refer the patients for possible extraction and uh, take the, the, the combined CT as well. So this, the patients, because of that, the findings in the cervical spine. Um, so I refer the patients for that uh, uh, medical examination. The medical examination, first, uh, they also consider the, uh, the neoplastic or malignancies first, but after um, multiple tests uh, at the University of Pennsylvania and the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota, and the final, the conclusion was a sarcoidosis. Um, so that's the um, that's the, the the lesion. The patient had the, the lesion in the lung, and uh, um, this kind of lesion, um, it's unknown cause uh, lead information and immune cells from lump or granuloma uh, granulomas and can affect the various organ, often lungs, lymph nodes, uh, sometimes can live and the kidney. Um, no long-term the problem for many cases, but some patients may have the fatal outcome if, if the patient is involving like a long kidney and the liver. Now, after you look at the, the cervical spine, you also can look at the, uh, uh, the scar base, uh, like this one, that the, um, there's the multiple lines you can use to uh, get to the, the reference. Um, the one of the common line um, I often use is the Chamberlain's line. 
Um, this is uh, uh, from that uh, the hard part to that um, the posterior aspect of Freeman and mechanism. And you can draw a line from here, from the hard part to the frame and magnet here. So the odontoid process, this one should be um, less than three millimeter um, about the, of the line, but this one is kind of aligned the line. So that's fine. This is still in the, in the normal range. Now this one, this is the kind of finding. This, uh, this is a, um, the finding. It's actually it's a significant finding. You can see here that normally the odontoid process should be aligned with the, this, uh, the Chamberlain's line or, or should be less than three millimeter. This is kind of like a, a more than 10 millimeter above the, this line. And almost the entire odontoid process are in the frame and mechanism. As we know, the frame magnet has the brain stem, which is a very important brain structure that connect the brain and the rest of the body. If there is the, the damage of the brain stem, the patient can have the, the sudden death because it can stop uh, the heart beating the function the right way. Now from MRI, you can see this one, the odontoid process is here, kind of compressed, compressed the, uh, the, the brain stem. So this is a, the, the finding of the called base, uh, base cell, um, basal imagination. Now, the, this is just like uh, the, the, the finding is above the, uh, the chamberlain's line at the more than three millimeter. And this patient has the autogen, um, osteogenesis imperfecta. Now this, this kind of patients, uh, the best imagination are uh, often involving the congenital or acquired uh, um, the, the condition. Um, now for the acquired condition, like rheumatoid arthritis, patches, disease, hyperthyroidism, if the patient have this kind of the, the condition, uh, we may have to uh, look in that uh, the area and the rule out um, this significant finding. Now the scar based uh, intracranial classification, you know, after look at the cranial cervical junction, you can look at the scar base and most of the common finding are the classifications. And the most of those classifications are insignificant findings. So you probably you don't need to follow up. For example, like this one, there's the classification in the image of the brain. And this is a pineal gland classification. Um, this kind of classification is about 40% population and four to six millimeter in diameter. And uh, certainly this is, a, a, you know, if this kind of the, the, the size, you should, you don't need to follow up. But if it's more than 10 millimeter in diameter, then you may have to follow up. Sometimes uh, the, the pineal gland also can have the tumor, the tumors can have the calcification. So that kind of the, the situation, if more than 10 millimeter, then you may need to follow up. Now, Choroid uh, plexus classification. This one, uh, as we know, that uh, this is also very common. This is in the uh, in the ventricle area, and sometimes may have like a diffused finding, like this one on convinced CT. And this is also physiological uh, the classification, and we don't need to follow up. But vascular classification, like carotid classification, um, in the past, we know that the chronic carotid classification in the neck, but actually, uh, once we have the combined CT, we see the much more carotid classification in, in the scar base. Um, the, that's uh, like this one, this the uh, internal carotid artery classification. Uh, you can see it on the sagittal view, this is kind of like a train track. And you can see it on the axial view. And on the 
the chrono view, you often see like eyeglasses appearance. And the sum the classification, like uh, uh, this one, it's involving the chosen uh, uh, portion of the internal carotid artery. You may see kind of linear the classification. Um, you can see linear classification here. And on the axial view, you can see the kind of the dot, the classification in the internal carotid artery. Now, this kind of the, the classification, this one happens in the Pichot's portion of the, uh, the internal carotid artery. And this may be a little bit difficult for other dental specialists to recognize. All maxillofacial radiologists, uh, uh, we, we, we were trained uh, to see that um, the area like this one, this, the, this is a carotid artery here. This is a normal side. But on this side, the carotid artery, you can see this is a classification uh, inside. So this kind of classification, that's the, uh, uh, the high risk of the stroke because that the, the most part of the carotid artery are occupied by this um, the classification. So if you see the carotid classification, you probably should, uh, uh, have patients to do the follow up. Um, some patients, if the patients know they have the uh, like cardiovascular disease, they may have the, uh, the physician do the regular checkup. But for those patients who don't know they have the cardiovascular disease, so this is a, the important, you can uh, refer the patients to get the uh, medical examination. And uh, some patients you may um, the, um, the avoid uh, like stroke. This is another instant finding for a 11 year old female. The patient would afford for orthodontic treatment mainly because the canine, the, the eruption is kind of horizontal um, uh, impacted. Um, but the, from the combined CT, actually this part, um, there's the close to the spinal the sinus area, but um, indeed this is not the, uh, not the classification of the sinuses. But these patients tend not to be um, with the osteoblastoma in the, in the, uh, the scar base. So this one that uh, we uh, refer to the, the neurosurgeons for uh, the the further examination and the treatment. Now, this is a, a 67 year, the Caucasian female for dental implants. And you can see here, that's the, the um, there's the pituitary gland classification. Now, the, sometimes you may confuse this one with the, the, carotid, the internal carotid artery classification, but internal carotid artery classification tends to be uh, on the side of the salatosica. This one is in the middle of the salatosica. And also you can see that, that there is the erosion here in the dorsal serra. Um, so this is a, um, uh, not, the, not the, the carotid classification. And this turned out to be a cranial pharyngioma with the classification inside of the, this tumor. Now this kind of tumor, although it's benign tumor, but sometimes they have the malignant or neo, the malignant behavior, they can cause the bone uh, erosion. And a lot of patients may have the symptoms, but we caught this patient in early stage and the patients uh, had no symptom yet. Now this is 70 year old the male for dental implants and when we look at the scar base, we can see there is the enlarged the, the salatosica. As we know, the salatosica it's, it's, it's more like uh, like a, a twelve millimeter in diameter uh, the shape, but this is about like uh, uh, the twenty um, the millimeter uh, the in in depth. So there is the significant bulging of the um, of the uh, the sign. 
the, the, the Saratosika. And uh, this is the bulging of the Sara floor. And uh, there was also erosion of the, the posterior aspect of the, the docent Sara. And these patients uh, turn out to be uh, with the pituitary adenoma. So certainly that kind of patients need uh, uh, the immediate attention. That's the significant finding. Now, in the scar base also, we need to look at the, the temporal bone, particularly in the middle ear. And uh, uh, as we know that in the middle ear, we have this, uh, the oscars there, the stavis, incus, malleus, at the tiny, the, uh, the bony structure in the middle ear. And uh, sometimes you may see the cochlea and the semi, a circular canal in the in the middle and the inner ear. Uh, the the common finding is that uh, um, the inflammation in, in in the middle ear. The middle ear normally should be with the ear inside, like this one, more like sinus. But if there is a soft tissue uh, lesion inside of the middle ear, this is ossicles here, then you can see the opacification in the middle ear. And also in the middle ear, you, as we know, there's the, the facial nerve that the, um, it, it's also very close to that uh, uh, the middle ear. So this is uh, um, um, the cochlea here. This is the ossicles here. This is the ossicles and the, some sort of like erosion here. So these patients turn out to be with the uh, cluster toma. And certainly these patients, uh, this kind of patient need the, uh, the immediate attention. And the cholestatoma is tumor-like lesion and um, uh, involving the, the upper the tepany, uh, membrane and the post-sex space most often in that location. And a lot of patients developing from the chronic otitis and uh, radiographically you see the rounded soft tissue mass in the middle ear and the erosion of the skeleton and os uh, oscular chain and other the boning structures of the middle ear. Now, after we look at the, the temporal bone, we also can quickly look at temporal mandibular joint. Uh, most of the temporal mandibular joint lesion, as we know, they are degenerative uh, the lesion, you know, uh, like, uh, um, the threatening sclerotic change um, sometimes may have the erosion, you know, the cortical erosion or subconscious cyst formation. In this particular case, you see that the osteophyte formation as well. A uh, similar finding, the threatening can be in the glenoid fossa and the joint space is kind of narrowed. This is a typical the finding of the degenerative osteoarthritis. But sometimes uh, you may also have to pay attention to it. And if uh, there is the, the one side with the, um, the significant finding with the significant bone destruction, um, you may have to uh, compare the patient's history and the rule out the some the, uh, metastatic lesion like these patients with the, the colon cancer metapsis on the left side. Now, after you look at the, those, uh, the, um, the, the temporal mandibular joint and the bony structure, you also can quickly look at the neck soft tissue. As we know, the soft tissue in the neck have different, the, the angulation, the triangle, the muscular structure has different the, the boundary of the, those triangle. Um, so we know that uh, um, in the, uh, in the anatomy, but on Combin CT, unfortunately, we cannot see uh, those the muscular structure or vascular structure uh, on the Combin. We can only see the heart tissue. Um, unless there's the classification in the soft tissue, then we cannot see those uh, the pathosis or abnormalities. Now, in the neck soft tissue, the most common the instant finding are uh, classifications. Uh, particularly, we see that the stylohyoid ligament classification. This is very common. 
it's it's about like 30 percent population of patients you may see that the style of higher the recommend classification um now on the the combi well, you may see that the, uh looking at the, the axial chrono and the sagittal view you can see that the, um this is a uh you may see that the classification here the classification they can be starting from the styloid process or sometimes can be starting from the 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 lesser home of the hyoid bone and sometimes can be uh, just in the middle of the ligament and if you look at this classification and you can see that the, the classification if you're moving that uh uh, the up and down, you can see this classification is going towards to the hyoid bone. Now, the other, the uh, instant insignificant finding of the classification is the tritious cartilage classification. You can see this one like a rice. Um, it's the smooth round uh, classification. Uh, this classification is located medial and inferior to the the great home of the hyoid. Um, and uh, um, you can see that the, um, this is a oval and smooth shape. And uh, uh, it's about like 5% uh, male and 12% female in the patient with uh, over 40 years of age. So this is an insignificant find. This is a tritition cartilage classification. And sometimes you may see the sciatica list. This is usually in the submandibular triangle. And you see, maybe you can onion skin layer by layer, you have see the mineralization center. Uh, this is typical, the sciatica uh, um, list. Now, one of the significant finding is that the um, uh, carotid classification, like this one, this classification usually it's located that if you draw a line, this is a epiglottis here. Uh, you draw a line from epiglottis and then you draw a line, the tangential to sternocleidal mastoid the muscle, which is here. If you draw a line, the classification in this region it's carotid classification. The carotid classification can be irregular shape. And it could be the dot, could be that the more round shape as well. Now, those the, the carotid classification we often can uh, refer the patients to uh, the to the for, um, further examination. Sometimes uh, the patient may need to do the ultrasound to see if there is narrowing of the carotid artery or not. Now, although we don't see the neck soft tissue well, but uh, we often have to compare the soft tissue from left to right. Like this one that's the, on the right side, there's the pronounced soft tissue enlargement. And this uh, turned out to be a large lymph nodes here in the neck. And the patients had a lot of implants uh, um, the down and uh, um, then the, the follow-up shows there is also rising on the, on the tongue. Uh, so this turned out to be a squamous cell carcinoma in the tongue. So that's, uh, although we don't see that the, um, the soft tissue well, but sometimes we have to compare uh, the, the profile of the soft tissue uh, as well. Sometimes may also uh, help him find uh, some significant lesions. So that's the, uh, the pretty much different the region we may see uh, uh, that the instant findings because of the time, just to give some the example of those uh, um, the findings in different anatomical location. Now, in summary, uh, we talk about the, what is the instant finding. The instant finding is the, the finding may not be related to our main reason, for example, dental implants. Um, or orthodontic training and planning. And there's the legal and ethical responsibility as dental uh, specialists. Um, if there's a significant lesion, we don't find, we don't discover, we don't report, then we have the legal responsibility. But for those insignificant lesion, we should not over-diagnose We should not, um, 
uh, uh, you know, like uh, make uh, patients uh, feel burden for those uh, uh, insignificant findings. So that's the ethical responsibility um, of uh, um, the dental specialists. And also we know that the 3D CBCT can see the more instant findings than 2D imaging. And also we discussed uh, uh, the region by region and that uh, how to find those instant findings and how to classify the, 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 those findings into insignificant uh, and the significant uh, the findings. Now finally, and I would like to share another picture. Yeah, the, um, the, the some of you visited our, our school before and this, uh, the many of you uh, did not. Our school has more than 150 years history. It was the second oldest dental school in the United States. And uh, this is our the, uh, student lab, and uh, this is uh, the, our lecture room, and this is our clinic, and uh, this is our uh, student the doctor, um, and mainly um, the the uh, the students uh, or graduate students are treating the patients in our clinic. And uh, um, the finally, I uh, wish uh, everybody be well and be safe and uh, um, and oh, I hope that uh, this uh, uh, pandemic will over soon so we everybody can go back to a normal life soon. Thank you very much for your invitation. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yang, for your great presentations for us. And now we let the discussions uh, topic yeah, for the young presentation. For the participant who, who would like to ask the question, please write your question in the chat box. Yeah. Or you can click the raise hand uh, button after the lecture. You can introduce yourself and ask your question. Oh, okay. you mean the, just the, uh, stop sharing? Sorry. OK. No better. OK. OK, any questions? OK, uh, from uh, Dr. Asari uh, in the chat box. Yeah. Uh, Rasari uh, asked the question. Uh, Thank you for the young for a comprehensive presentation and a lot of inspiration for lecture and students. The students, I want to ask: We have a CBCT that can be adjust FOP. Usually, we adjust according to the request. Usually, for implant, we use of a small FOP. What is for? Uh, uh, Dr. Yang yeah, advice for use FOV because covering the maxillofacial with the consequence of being more expensive on more uh, radiations. Uh, what about uh, the Alara concept? Okay. Um, thank you, Dr. Azari. This is a very good question. Um, it's uh, it's uh, for the dental implants. Uh, um, we have the also these days we have the like a periodontist we have the um the some even the general dentist also are doing the implants depend on the, it depend on that the, um, the request um if if the patients need need like a sinus lift or if they need uh, to do the, the bone graft in the maxillary sinus, I would always get the, um, um, the middle field of view uh, and trying to cover the osteomere complex. If the mandibular is not involved, we can just uh, do in the maxilla with the middle field of view and uh, cover the, um, the bridge of nose and uh, uh, the osteomere complex and part of the um, the ethmoid air cells as well. 
So in this way, we can help them to assess the patency of the osteomere complex. Um, as I know, the same that the doctor, they, um, they, if they just doing like a premoral, they think they would not involve in the sinus and that they may just have that um, the small field of view or if they, they have the machine, they can only get the, the, the small field of view or limited field of view. And also they need the man, mandibular um, the structure as well. Then they may not be able to get the osteometer complex. So to, to, to answer your question, it's like, I would I prefer to do the middle field of view and trying to get the osteometer complex. Uh, for the for the implants in in the maxillary uh, posterior dentition. Okay, Doctor uh, Yang, thank you for your answer. And this is uh, uh, two people uh, raise hand. Uh, okay, first time for Doctor Fahmi. Doctor Fahmi, please. Uh, Dr. Dr. Fahri uh, first. Dr. Okay. Fahri first. Okay. okay, Dr. Fahri first. Okay, Dr. Fahri. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your time. It's okay, Dr. Fami, if you want to ask first. <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, thank you, uh, Prof. Jiang and Dr. Belly. First of all, I would like to uh, express my, uh, so it's so honor uh, again for us to have you here, Prof. Jiang. So, yeah, I have a question. Speaking about incidental finding, uh, a few weeks ago, a few days ago, we had a patient that uh, was referred from an orthodontics department for evaluating the impacted maxillary canine. And at the apex of the teeth, uh, it was found it's incidentally uh, a canal. So later we assume or identified the canal uh, as uh, canalis sinosus. And I believe you heard that the canal is sinusus before, and I want you to know. I want uh, to know what's your opinion about the canal because uh, it it usually only uh, seen or only found only by CBCT. So uh, yeah, maybe you'd have a research about the canal is sinusus as well. So I <laughs> please uh, I I want to know your opinion about that. Thank you, Prof. Chian. Actually, this is uh, yeah I. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the the uh, the research on on on, on this this, uh, this area. Certainly, I would encourage you, you know, to to develop in the, the in in this field. <laughs> okay, thank you, bro. I, I thought uh, uh, I thought you have uh, because it's really some publication said it was a common structure, but. Uh, some publications say uh, some publications say it was an, a variation anatomy. So yeah, I just wanted to know if I just wanted to know if you, whether you know about the canalis sinosus, but it's okay, Prof. Uh, yeah, the uh, most people yeah they think this is a variation of normal. Yeah, that's the uh, uh, but certainly I think if you see the more, I think uh, you you probably you can look into this area. Yeah, that certainly can um, you know that. Um, help with the, the clarification, yes. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Prof. Jian. Thank you, Dr. Berry. Oh, okay. Thank you, Fahri. And next uh, from our college, uh, Dr. Fahmi, Dr. Fahmi Oskandar, silahkan. Okay, okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Belly, and uh, excellent presentation uh, for uh, uh, Professor Jiang. Uh, I have a question for you. Uh, I I am interested. Uh, I'm interested in uh, craniofacial imaging calcification, and I noticed that in the carrying out radio diagnostic, do we need to develop in based on the density? the unit in CBCT. What about your opinions? Thank you. So uh, you were talking about the uh, intracranial calcification? Yeah, yeah, uh, intracranial calcification. Do we need a density unit parameter for uh, radiodiagnostic this case? 
uh, means oh, so for, the, for the, the intracranial calcification, we don't really need um, need the the density um, measure. Uh, we you know the for most the cases actually we can see that the uh, uh, the just the front imaging because those the, the in, intracranial the soft tissue brain tissue they are soft tissue if there's the calcification we should be able to see that the, the visibility I, I we don't need the particular you know density measure are you talking about the need to measure the density or yes only for imaging density uh, units yeah that um unless there's like um like a very very the tiny uh, like classification we have to separate the, if that's the the, the uh, um, normal versus classification or or sometimes there's like a you know the change of the contrast and the um the imaging adjustment or, or some like uh, the threshold or some uh, you you may confuse the, with the uh, um, the classification, then you probably the dense, you know, your, you know, your the density measurement can help. But most of the those when we do the instant finding, we just uh, looking at the scan, we 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 um we can figure out it's the there is intracranial classification or a carotid classification uh, or or not. But from research purpose, that might be um, might be uh, the useful, you know, that uh, see the what kind of the density uh, uh, um, in 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 those the classification. Okay, thank you, Professor. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Fami. Okay, uh, next question is from uh, Dr. Sandy in the chat box. Yeah, uh, thank you for uh, thank you, Prof. Diem, for the splendid presentation. If you don't mind, I want to ask a patient in my experience, incidental findings more than often encountered in the panoramic radiograph, most of them were asymptomatic and the patient have no idea they have they have it can you share uh, with us what are the consideration whether we need to do additional cbct examination or not when we found in incidental finding into the radiograph such as uh, opg or panoramic okay okay uh, so yeah, if I understand the, uh, the the question correctly, it's like if you 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 see that the findings uh, on panoramic radiograph, and you you need to decide the whether or not the need the three D CBCT, correct? So that's the that's the your question, correct? Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe that. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the actually that one is the this has the um the similar similar and the maxilla and the mandible. For example, if if on panoramic radiograph, you should be able to see a lot of time like uh, like anastosis, idiopathic osteosclerosis, and the tori or some those findings uh, or the anatomic structure uh, or variation of anatomic structure, if you recognize those, then you would not uh, refer for the combined CT, the study. But if you see the some like cystic lesion, uh, you know, like uh, um, odontogenic cyst or odontogenic tumor, and also you suspect some sort of uh, um, malignancies, um, then you certainly you would uh, recommend the the, the combined CT for further uh, the evaluation. Um, so this is a um, pretty much uh, um, the based on what the, what the nature of the of the entity or lesion you are dealing with. Uh, um, 
the panoramic creative graph certainly, you know, that has a lot of super imposition and, uh, you know, the cervical spine, aerospace, uh, the sinuses, we all see those the overlapping, but, uh, um, you know, the combined CT, they can, you know, they separate those structures. So if you, you suspect the lesion, uh, it's, it's, it's not in the jaw, then you probably also can use the combine to separate them. So that's the three dimensionally uh, see that uh, uh, anatomic uh, structure or lesion. Um, but if, if it's like, uh, as I mentioned, like idiopathic osteosclosis or, uh, you know, like anastosis, uh, exostosis, tori, you, you probably should not uh, have the combines uh, to follow up. Okay, uh, thank you. And the next question, we have a lot uh, of questions uh, in the chat box. Uh, the next question is from uh, Dr. Fadil uh, from uh, Hassanuddin University. Uh, uh, Dr. Fadil has some question. Thank you for the wonderful presentation regards to ethical side. Ethical side, Dr. Yang. I'm curious, Prof, how should we make a report on accidental finding that have a high category to follow up. Should, uh, sorry, should we write some differential diagnosis or only describe the character of the finding based on their location, shape, internal structure, and peripheral and effects on surrounding tissue? Okay. Next question. That, this is a very, very good question. Uh, uh, yeah, it's that, um, I think a different uh, institute or different um, country may have different rules for this one. Now, in, in the United States that we um, certainly had the, uh, a lot of time the dentists and dental specialists, they want to protect the, um, uh, themselves. So any kind of like uh, this kind of instant finding, especially like a significant uh, uh, the instant finding, um, we have to put in the patient's record, uh, like progress notes uh, that uh, describe the finding. And uh, also in, in US, uh, we have um, a lot of people, the practitioner, the general dentist or or dental specialists have the implant, uh, have the CBCD machine in their office. So they don't, they don't usually um, look at the, the scan by themselves. They look at the scan like for implant for particular tools, but they don't look at the rest of the scan by themselves. They send that the scan to oral and maxillofacial radiologists or imaging center. So then the radiologists, uh, um, then they will generate a, a report, the standardized radiology report, uh, list the, the, the diagnosis or differential diagnosis of that uh, the, the, the finding, and also recommend what kind of the, uh, the, the procedure, uh, need a follow-up or biopsy or, or that, um, the next uh, 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 procedure, then send that the radiology report back to the dentist. Um, so the dentist has that one as the record um, for, for the patients, put that the record in the, the patients. Um, so that's the, um, the, the standard practice in the, in the um, United States. Um, but for any kind of, um, um that uh, the the lesion uh, particularly if it's the significant lesion i would always put the in in the in the record patient's record uh, and uh, uh, just uh, you know that uh, for protection of the patient and protection of uh, um the the doctor um legally okay Thank you, Dr. Ryan. Uh, oh, Dr. Fahmi Oskandar, uh, raise hand again. Yeah. 
Ya, silakan Dr. Fahmi. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no question. Ya. Yeah. Uh, the, the other question is from uh, Dr. Ika. Ika from uh, Pejaran University. Uh, she has uh, some question. Thank you for Yang for the wonderful presentation. For my question, how to differ the incidental finding and artifactual finding in the general? Could you give us tips and tricks how to differ between them? Sometimes we still quite confused to differ them. Okay. Um, so the 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 some like um. Yeah, the, the instant finding, yeah, that's uh, probably um, um, has to the experience. That's why that uh, um, uh, even all maxillofacial radiologists, um, we have to like uh, um, accumulate, you know, read the, the, the tens of thousands of cases uh, uh, to accumulate that kind of experience. Um, so if you, um, if you are the general dentist or the, um, don't usually see that the three-dimensional imaging often. Um, so that uh, probably is a little challenge to, to recognize that uh, the instant of finding, particularly to uh, the differentiate the nature of the lesion. Um, so you probably can uh, get some help from the dental maxillofacial radiologists, um, or the uh, in some cases uh, uh, get the help from medical radiology uh, radiologists uh, radiologists. Dr. Bailey, I think you're still on mute. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, the next question is from uh, Dr. Mary from Prajajaran University. Therefore, Jiang, thank you for an uh, excellent presentation. I want to ask you, is there any characteristics of malignant lesions differ from other lesions? What we can find in CBCT imaging? Okay. Okay, that's, uh, this is also it's a very good uh, question. Um, this is actually the question that um, if you, um, is particularly um, if you're not a radiologist, for radiologists, this is probably is relatively uh, uh, easier. Um, if you're not a radiologist, um, I would, uh, if you, you, from my lecture, you, you, um, you may miss the most parts, but the one part I hope you can remember is that uh, if you see a lesion with the irregular border, with the destruction of the bony structure of the sinus floor, destruction of the nasal floor, uh, or the, the, the part of the maxillary mandible with the poorly defined border, ill-defined border, non-corticated, you have to rule out malignancy or neoplastic lesion. Um, most uh, benign lesions like odontogenic cyst and odontogenic tumor, as we know, they always have very defined border, very, uh, you know, a lot of time the corticated border and the shape is you know, round oval shape. So those are the, the benign appearance. But if you see the irregular, the, the border non-corticated, the irregular poorly defined lesion, and you have to rule out the, uh, the malignancies. Uh, certainly sometimes uh, infectious disease, they may look like malignancies, but uh, um, certainly with the, uh, clinical information combined with the clinical information, uh, you should be able to um, the rule out malignancies uh, from convincing CT. Okay. 
Uh, thank you. The next question is from Dr. Lucy. You know Dr. Lucy, Lucy F. Silawati from Pajajaran University. Uh, thank you uh, for nice presentation. I have a question. In the presentation was discussed regarding fungal, fungal infection in soft tissue. Can you give the tips how to distinguish the image of this infection based on the cause such as bacteria? virus or fungus yeah this question uh can you uh, repeat that or what uh can what's okay. the uh can you give the tips yeah uh, uh -huh. how to distinguish the image of this infection based yeah. on the cause such as bacteria virus or fungus yeah. Uh, so uh, it's that it's talking about like um, the the sinus infection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for our yeah. infections. Yeah, um, yeah. I I in the um the from the uh, my um the the uh the presentation and from also the experience, uh, um, I would uh, see for, there's the the clear the imaging like um the features for these if uh, if it's the bacterial viral infection those tends to be in the acute sinusitis um, usually it's it, it's in in the uh, acute phase um, patients have the clinical symptoms certainly and the congestions of the nose uh, then they also the radiographic on the on the combin CT, you tends to see air through the level, so kind of horizontal air through the level, and often you can see the opacification uh, of the sinuses with the air bubbles, like uh, the air inside. So with the with the with the, this kind of appearance. Uh, the sinus border should be intact. It's not the, um, not the, with the sclerotic change. So those kind of the, the appearance usually indicate the viral and bacterial infection or acute infection. But if the the, the chronic infection certainly you know if there's uh, um, these even the bacteria of viral infection stay there for a long time you know, the more than three months, then we may see the some change of the bony structures like uh, the sclerosis of the, the sinus border or sinus wall. Then you see the opacification, the sinus and the thickening of the, the, um, the mucosa. Then we have to uh, consider that's the chronic sinus, uh, sinusitis infection. Now, versus a fungal infection, usually the fungal infection, uh, actually the, the lecture, the same, um, some people were saying, you can do one hour lecture on the fungal infection itself, because there's so many, the, the, the fungal, um, um, there's the different, the, 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 the fungal, the, the, the gym that involved, and also there is, uh, um, uh, the patient's condition in, involved. But we, unlike medical CT or MI, we cannot see those, uh, um, the separate those uh, structures well, or, or that the vascular uh, does uh, supply those, those uh, the things. Um, from Combin, we can only see is that the, uh, the fungal infection tends to have that like classification or more classification the inside that the, uh, uh, the opacification in the sinuses. Um, certainly some of the chronic sinusitis, we also can see the calcification inside, but the fungal tends to have more calcification inside. Okay, thank you. Uh, any question? Okay, we wait the, the other question. And uh, Dr. Yang, uh, you said a lot of CBCT machine is used in uh, USA, American, uh, uh, 
uh, for uh, uh, GP use or uh, dental specialist use to. Uh, we know the 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 uh, uh, conventional uh, uh, like uh, OPG or periapical radiologist radiograph maybe uh, have a lot of mistake. Yeah, if the interpretation. Uh, this is uh, I think th this is the past. Yeah, the past technologies in 2D. Yeah, uh, for dental or periapical. And the next unknown is the CBCT technologies. Yeah, uh, can you uh, how to how about your opinions? Yeah, about these technologies, can the uh, C CONBIM technology is to uh, for the standard uh, or basic interpretation for every case in the future or no? So now the based on the, the um now the we have the position paper um published in in the american academy or maxillofacial radiology yeah. um now we think if we do the dental implants we should have the the combine should have like a 3d imaging of the implant site and uh, now the in the past uh, we have uh, the 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 dentist use just the periapical radiograph or panoramic radiograph for dental implants, and a lot of mistake uh, has had occurred. So the position guidelines is that the for for implant procedure. The standard of care should include the three D imaging, should include in the, the combine for for implants. Okay, uh, uh, depend on the case, maybe. Yeah, not 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 for every every case for the future, maybe. Uh, for the for the implant case, it's it's uh, pretty much the. Um, in, in in most uh, schools or most uh, the the implant center, this uh, for every implant cases, but not for every patient. Uh, that um, um, we we can have the panoramic as the screening. You know yeah. that uh, if the patients uh, uh, come here before we decided to have the implants, we can have that. Uh, uh, the panoramic as, as a preliminary study. But if we decided to place implant, we, we do the, um, the combine. Okay, okay, I, I see that. Uh, for, for the screening, uh, Dr. Roya, uh, you use a panoramic or full mode series photo? For, oh, for if that, um, if the new patients depend, if the comprehensive case, like uh, uh, the new patients come to the, the our school, it's depend on the situation. Most, uh, if the patient did not have previous uh, previous radiograph, we we tends to get the uh, uh, the the full mouse of the radiograph, uh, which including periapical radiograph and the by the winds uh, of the the uh, entire dentition. For the, for the new patients, uh, but some this also have like a, a ADA American Dental Association and our academy has the guidelines. But the, some the new patient may just have the panoramic radiograph oh. plus the by the winds okay. uh, for for the 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 um, for the uh, the the screening or for the for the comprehensive okay. assessment of the of the dentition. I repeat again, uh, the ADA guidelines, uh, uh, they said the use for panoramic radiograph for screening, yeah, not uh, uh, use the full mode series photo. This is okay? This true? Yeah, the, the guidelines like uh, um, for, the, for, for example, if there's impacted the teeth, uh, yeah. the third morals, then the um, the oral surgeon they tends to uh, need to see the entire, um, like a, a third moral in the mandible. Um, now, 
and the periapicoroid graph sometimes we can get, but the, we may not be able to get the, all the third model. So the, the panoramic uh, radiograph has, the, uh, has a lot of uh, usage there. And also for mixed dentition, you know, that uh, um, the panoramic also can help him with the, assess the, the, uh, the growth, uh, um, uh, the pattern for those uh, like a pedo and ortho patients, orthodontic patients. Oh, okay, thank you. And now we wait the any question maybe, uh, audience? Uh, do you have a question or the other's uh, opinion about the topic in our webinar? Yes, CBCT incidental findings. Okay. Uh, Putri, if we don't have any question, okay, we, we close this uh, discussion or uh, uh, you, you, you have the, any idea? Um, I think it's different on the professor. Yeah. Do you have um, any kind of material that you want to um, deliver to us again? Because we still have 20 minutes left. Professor. But Dr. Yang uh, looks, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, night in the, in the, in the field. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think um, we can uh, close the discussion session. But uh, there is one more question, Dr. Bailey, coming from Dr. Manik Priya Oh, Minyasi. yeah, yeah. Dr. Manik, uh, could you directly uh, uh, Question asked the, the question, uh, not uh, to the chats uh, from chat box. Dr. Monique, silahkan. There are like the questions to Dr. Yan. Thank you, Dr. Belly. Okay. How are you, Dr. Jia? Professor Jia? So nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Thank you. <laughs> I just have one question. Uh, actually, it's about uh, maxwell sinus the incidental finding. Um, I would like to ask about the sclerotic reaction. If we have a case of a periapical uh, infection that we have already suspect uh, the periapical uh, infection is invading the sinus, is the sclerotic reaction in the floor of the sinus is this important sign of uh, this kind of uh, uh, this kind of uh, infection. I mean, this kind of condition that we, is it true that the sclerotic reaction is the sign of uh, the preapical uh, tooth that has a preapical infection is already invading the sinus? So, uh... Great, uh, it's so nice to see you again. That um, um, now, if I understand the, the, the question, it's like correctly, it's that you, uh, you ask if uh, there's the, the apical lesion uh, mm -hmm. involving the sinus. Mm -hmm. and the, what's the, uh, how do we say this is a, the, from the, the alveolar process or from the sinus? Is, is it, this is a question or? Yes, is this is the specific uh, sign of the tooth that has in uh, the, uh, the, the process of infection is already invading the sinus. It's a sclerotic reaction in the floor of the sinus. I mean, the sclerotic reaction is the specific sign in this case. Yeah, um, usually like if there's that the, um, the involving the, uh, the apical lesion involving the sinus, often we see mm -hmm. like, uh, like pre-osteal reaction, like uh, the halo uh, the, uh, effect and um, that uh, the suddenly lift up the sinus, uh, the floor. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also we we tend to get the, that the muco, uh, mucositis that like a, a mucosal thickening or uh, um, in adjacent to uh, 
particularly the like moral tools uh, uh, or pre-moral tools, um, um, people call it the, the mucositis or some people call it sinusitis. Uh, uh, that's the, the, the really graphic sign. Usually, usually the odontogenic sinusitis tends to be in more localized. Um, versus like uh, if they have like sinusitis uh, uh, from the say the bacterial viral or other the, the fungal infection is more generalized uh, probably involving the entire the, the sinus um, uh, the mucosal uh, so odontogenic involvement tends to be like localized the, the mucosal thickening and with the, uh, with the pre reaction uh, the halo effect and also uh, um, certainly we see that the um, apical uh, uh, periodontitis change. It's about, uh, I think, uh, uh, is it about the periodontitis of the floor of the sinus? I mean, uh, have, you, have you heard about the hollow like appearance of this reaction? Is it the same uh, thing that you have yeah. already mentioned? Yeah, um, the, what's the, uh, the same, the, the hero? Uh, the hollow, ha hollow, like, hollow, hollow, like. Hollow rights that, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, hollow rights that, uh, yeah, that's the, um, the probably this, like, um, you know, like, uh, abscess granuloma that or small radical cyst that they pushed that the the, uh, the sinus flow up and the, the horrorized that uh, um, the, the with the horrorized appearance um, in 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 the in the region um, so, yeah is it, so uh, when i say that this condition of this this, this appearance of sclerotication is a pathognomonic uh, sign of the periostitis in the floor of the sinus caused by the infection of the uh, apical tooth. Am I correct? Uh, but I, I did not hear that the, uh, the last part is that the, um, uh, the, you, you were saying like a tooth, uh, um, it, the in, the horrorized is related to like a tooth infection. Yeah, that's the for sure is that that certainly has the tooth infection. Uh, certainly has the pulp necrosis and uh, apical periodontitis. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the connection, I, 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 I'm, yeah, sorry, I did not really, uh, Maybe to get to that um, you 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 question correctly is so you mentioned you you were asking the the link between the tooth and uh, and the finding. Yeah, yeah. that's my question. <laughs> so uh, because I have a, a felt like a, a confusing case that there's the infection of the in the epileptical, but there's also um, like a uh, mucosal tendon uh, overlap in the same area. So I still don't have any idea whether this is true mucosal tendon alone or with the uh, invasion of the epileptical uh, infection into the sinus. Thank you. Uh, so uh, so you 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 have that like, uh, the 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 case with the apical lesion. Yes, yes. The apical lesion, and but there's no sclerotic uh, sign. But uh, in the same time, there's the mucositatin cyst, suspected mucositatin cyst, cyst inside the sinus. That is it related to this uh, condition of the apical infection or if, uh, Different entity. Uh, so, so that, um, yeah, that that yeah. If uh, 
maybe next time we can share, we can see if that's the <laughs> okay. case. Okay, maybe, that, maybe that, I will maybe, share you the case. <laughs> yeah, that, that, uh, yeah, we can, uh, uh, that, that'd be great. That uh, the probably is, it would be interesting, uh, uh, the, the, the case to, uh, uh, to, to review that. Uh, um, <laughs> Okay, thank you very much for your uh, answers, Dr. Tian. Okay, okay, thank you, Dr. Oh, you're, you're, you're quite welcome. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. this connection is like, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, for whatever reason, it's kind of a uh, yeah, break with the sun break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the long distance <laughs> from Marika in Indonesia or Jakarta. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Monique. Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Yang, this is the last question, maybe, yeah, from Dr. Fahri. Yeah, Dr. Fahri uh, asked the question of, if possible, to deliver another question according to your research. Do you have a statement about incidental that usually happen in specific age or gender and age? For instance, Female in uh, 60 uh, years old is more likely to have an incidental finding uh, on TMG. Yeah, that's, that's questions. Yeah, um, that's also a very a good question, a specific question. We um, certainly um, we haven't went this far that uh, more um, we um, from our the study we we did not have like uh yeah certainly this in general study that the, it's the seems the female is more popular but we did not have like uh, uh we did not do this more specific um uh the analysis uh the certainly um in the um in the same we we the recently we had the one that uh published in, in the, the Prost journal with the, with the, um, uh, some the the, uh, the Prost uh, we, 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 but we this the some the find but we did not uh, go that detail it's certainly if you uh, like uh, you have a more cases TMJ cases uh, I would yeah the, the, the encourage you to 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 get those information you know like uh, see that the, which one is more popular um although it's the yeah you know, based on medical that yeah the, the previous literature is the yeah, female is the more uh more often have that uh, tmj uh, the the uh, involvement but certainly you know different country different region maybe have the different uh, uh you know preference so that you know certainly can it's worth to 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 looking into or doing the, some project on it. Okay, thank you. Uh, the TMG is uh, very, uh, for, for, for me, for us, TMG is the very difficult interpretation of Yang is uh, many, many uh, variation, yeah, uh, depend on the age, the uh, bad habit or a habit, uh, gender and the, the other the factors. Okay, the uh, Prof. Yang, Dr. Yang is the, the last the, the last question. And for the close statement, maybe from you for this presentation. Okay, you have a close statement. Yeah, last... again, yeah, that's the um uh, thank you so much uh, for um for your invitation and uh, for your participating in the uh, this uh, this lecture and uh, um I Again, I wish uh, uh, you know this pandemic will be over soon, so then that we can see um, you know the everybody uh, again that uh, uh, either in, in U.S. or in Indonesia or in other national international conferences. So that's the um, you know the, the goal, and certainly if you have that uh, any questions. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Feel free. You can, yeah, um, you know that uh, the email to me or communicate uh, uh, through uh, the uh, some of you. Um, so we can uh, uh, hopefully we can uh, discuss more and uh, uh, then you know the, the helping um, to.
to understand more on this topic. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Yang, for your brief, brief, brief presentation. And we back to uh, our uh, uh, officer of the Futri. Uh, back to you, Futri. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Belly. Thank you so much, Professor Yang for your enlightening presentation about incidental findings in CBCT. I wish there will be another lecture session in the future, especially about incidental findings that would be significant to the patient health, or maybe um, another collaboration in research professor. Now, before we wrap our session up today, there will be certificate submission to our speaker and moderator that will be given by the Vice Dean on behalf of the Dean of Faculty of Dentistry, Universitas Pajajaran, Dr. Ndang Syamsuddin, Specialist Consultant of Oral Surgery Department. So Dr. Ndang, time is yours. Thank you. Good morning, Prof. Ziyang. The certificate of appreciation is presented to professor for sharing valuable knowledge as visiting lecture speaker today. Our thank to your attending cases that inspired so many people out there. Uh, thank you for making time to uh, sit through this visiting lecture. I look forward to our next interaction soon. And also, uh, and also, this is uh, to certify our moderator, Dr. Barry Sam, for guiding uh, our discussion panel. Thank you for uh, capturing the audience so well. It was lively, energizing, educative, and fulfilling because of your presence. Wishing you all the best for your future and your work. Thank, okay. thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ndang. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now we move to the last session, which is a photo session. Our operator will take the screen capture. So please turn on and open your camera. <clears throat> there will be five, um, five screen capture. The screen capture would begin in one, two, three. Okay, thank you very much for your participation and it is the end of our session today. I hope we can meet in the next visiting lecture. Thank you so much, Professor Yang. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you so much, thank Professor, you, Professor Yang. Yang. Thank you. Yang. See you again. Good evening. Yes.